Today I am going to be doing a video on everything you need to know about having brightly colored, funky, unnatural hair. The reason why I'm doing this video is because I get asked all the time, tons of questions. What do you use in your hair? How do you do your hair? How do you keep your hair looking healthy? Why has it been two months since you dyed your hair, like now, and it still looks very vibrant and the only thing you have to do is your roots? I get questions like this all the time on YouTube, on in real life, on Instagram. I get these all the time. I decided that I was going to make a video kind of like the everything you need to know about having, about bright, bright, unnatural, funky color, whatever uh, hair this is. So this is kind of, this is basically going to be it. I have a full video on maintaining this kind of hair that is kind of like a sub video to this that I did so I wouldn't ramble on a lot while doing this. So I'll link that below if you just want to know my tips and tricks for maintaining your color. So I'm just going to get right into it and by starting off I'm just going to say I am in no way shape or form a professional but I have been dyeing my own hair for 13 years. So I know how my hair works, I know it works on my hair, I've ruined my hair a bunch of times as a teenager so I kind of know what not to do, what to do. Um, I've helped friends get from really kind of bad hair to looking pretty nice. So I do kind of know what I am doing, but I'm also here to say that just because you learned that that's how you do it, I know tons of people that have gone to school that have learned to do something one way and then gone to work somewhere else and learned something another way. I have a bunch of friends that work in salons and work at Sally's and have gone to school and they've taught me or showed me or, you know, told me certain things about how to do things. And that's kind of how I've learned. So 13 years of experience doing my hair. My hair is in fairly good shape and this is two months right here. Two months of my hair being like this. So it's not faded that much except in the roots. The only thing I have is a lot of root going on. My ombre on the ends of the front of my hair is pretty faded. So I do know how to keep up my hair. I do know how to dye my hair. So if you guys want to figure out, or you, if you guys want to see everything you need to know about brightly uncolored natural hair from just an average person, keep watching. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is dye. There are so many dyes on the market right now. There is Enrage. There is my not so favorite, but it still is the Ion Bright. There is Manic Panic. There is Special Effects. There's Beyond the Zone, which stinks. <laughs> there is Jazz in Colors, which I would not recommend. I just have this because a friend wanted me to dye her hair with that one time. There is Provana. There is so many. Not even like the ones that I have on me right now. There are so, so, so many. And most of these, I don't think this one is. This one smells chemically, but I just wanted to show you guys it. All of the ones that I just showed you, the Beyond the Zone, the Enrage, the Ion, the Manic Panic, and the Pravana, are all like stains, basically, for your hair. What that means is it's depositing color, but it's not damaging your hair while it's depositing color. It's basically you're putting in a deep conditioner to your hair and it's staining your hair this color. The reason why I say that I don't think this one is, this is Fuchsia Plum by Jazzing, um, is because it smells really chemically and when I put it on my head once, because I put like a strip of purple right here because I had it and I wanted to use it, it felt tingly, so I'm not really sure if this is, like, not chemicals, but I wanted to show it anyways because I'm going to be getting rid of it because I was going through my stash to show you guys these. But most of these, the ones that I showed you, um, Punky Colors is another one that it just deposits color to your hair. It doesn't damage it. Which is why when I see comments, and I actually wrote it down on my piece of paper over here, when I see comments in my videos or someone that I know told me that somebody told them to do this, I look at them like they're crazy. You don't need developer with these. No. No, 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 as I whack myself in the face with it. You do not need developer with these. Please do not mix any of these with developer. You are technically damaging your hair. This has chemicals in it. You don't want to damage your hair more than probably it already is. So, 
these are the dyes that you are going to be using. My personal favorite is Pravana Vivid. This is Wild Orchid. I have silver, I have blue, I have green, and I have um, violet in my bathroom where all my dyes are kept. I love this dye, so this is probably one of my favorites. Next going up is Special Effects, then Manic Panic, then Enrage, then Ion, and then Beyond the Zone. Those are like the my picking order, if you want to, if you will. And another thing that's cool with these dyes is you can mix them together. If you want, if you wanted a more pinkish purple, you can mix Vampire Red with um, Virgin Rose from Special Effects. If you wanted um, more of a teal color, um, you can mix a blue. It's essentially just like mixing paint. You can mix your own custom color. I mix in between brands. It's a really kind of nice way to get a custom color to your hair. So that's basically the dye. All about the dye. Um, now I'm just gonna basically get right into everything else. And that is getting your hair to be this bright color. Um, you don't always have to bleach your hair to get your hair these colors. For instance, one of my co-workers had a deep auburn hair and she wanted purple. So what she did was she took Pravana Vivid's Violet and put it over her dark color hair and she got this really dark purple color. It's not as bright as the ends of my hair purple, but it was still purple. So if you don't want to bleach your hair, you don't have to. Um, I will say, though, that a lot of these dyes don't like taking to virgin hair, so basically your regrowth may not take to it. But that doesn't mean that you have to bleach your hair. You can use a high lift or some kind of other dye to do your roots. But I can't really recommend that to you guys because I'm not, like, seeing you in person, so I can't really tell you, but the darker the dye is going to be. I have put um, Manic Panic Vampire Red over a dark brown color, and it made my hair like this really blood red. So really, it, it just varies. But if you do want your hair to be bright, you are going to have to bleach it or use a high lift. Um, those are two things that you can do. Bleaching your hair, some people get really scared about, so if you don't want to bleach your hair, you can go to, like, Sally's, and, um, Ion has a high lift brand, has, a, like, a high lift range, I think it's HL, I believe, I'm not really sure, but they have it in, like, blondes and reds, so if you were going for more of, like, a red color, you can use the red, uh, the red on your hair, or if you were going for more of, like, an unnatural, like, blue purples, that kind of thing, you could use one of the high lift blondes. It won't be as damaging to your hair as using bleach, but it's still going to be damaged. So if that's what you're going for, if you want the brighter color, you are going to have to lighten your hair. Don't really necessarily have to bleach it, you are going to have to lighten it though. Um, now if you're going from one color to another, you do not have to bleach your hair. Please, please, please do not bleach your hair if you are going from, say, a color like mine to like yellow, orange, blue. Don't. Don't. Just step away from the bleach and go pick up some color remover. If you do not have color remover or have no access to it, there are many different ways to remove the color from your hair. One being the vitamin C method, which is, I have a blog post more in depth of it, but it's basically grinding up vitamin C and shampoo and washing your hair a ton of times to strip the color from your hair. There is also a bleach cap. That's still damaging, but it's not as damaging as putting complete bleach on your hair. I have a blog post on a bleach cap, doing bleach caps down below. So now that you have the color removed from your hair, or if you're doing touch-ups, like right now, I have to do my roots soon, I wouldn't bleach my whole head. What I would do is I would take the bleach and I'd go probably like that much past my regrowth with the bleach. Lighten my roots and that is it. And then I put the refresh all over my head. Or if you just remove the color from your hair, you would put the new color all over your head. That prevents your hair from getting damaged. It prevents your hair from getting really, you know, breaking. It makes your hair look fairly nice for what you just did to it. That is my tip on doing that. It's really simple. It's not a whole lot of work. It's kind of like if you had red or blonde hair and you had to do your roots. It's, despite what people say, having funky, brightly colored hair 
is not a lot of work. I know people tend to say that, I mentioned this in my upkeep video, that they had to change their whole routine around to have brightly colored hair. You don't. You really, really don't. I barely change up anything from when I had this color hair from when I have blonde or brown. That being into my little upkeep kind of section of this. So to upkeep your hair just a little bit, not really going too far in, is basically me just telling you that you have to use a sulfate-free shampoo because that is going to help so, 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 so much. If you do not use a sulfate-free shampoo, this is going to be gone fairly quickly. I had a girl come up, come through my line at work, and she was like, oh, why is your hair so bright? How long have you had it? I just dyed my hair this color a week ago, and I was like, oh, her hair was, like, orange. I was like, oh, you dyed your hair orange? That's not, that's pretty good. And she's like, no, I dyed my hair bright red, and it turned to this in a week. First thing I asked her, what kind of shampoo are you using? She told me, and I was like, you have to use a sulfate-free shampoo, because that's what's stripping your color. So... That's one thing to do with upkeep. Another thing to do with upkeep is you really don't have to switch anything out. If you love your hair conditioner or your deep treatment mask, add a drop of this to your mask. My favorite deep conditioner is just TG Pro. You don't have to use it. But I like mixing my color into this because it's in a little tub. And um, I just mix a little bit in. Now this is my backup container and I have another one that I scoop this in because I change my hair so often that I don't want to, you know, mix purple dye into a huge container like this and then change my hair to blue. So I just take my backup container that I have of it and do it in and put it in there. That's just me. But you can mix a drop of dye into your normal everyday conditioner and this is going to deposit color every time you wash your hair. It's not going to deposit a whole lot of color. It's not going to stain your hands. It's just... Like, I'm rubbing it on my hand. You can't even see it. But this is going to deposit color on top of your color every single time that you wash your hair. So it prevents it from fading less. If you don't want to do that, you can also just buy a color depositing shampoo. And this is from Overtone. I have a complete review on this of this line. I'll link it down below. But... Basically, that is all you have to change and upkeep. I know people who tell me they take cold showers, they shower once a week or wash their hair once a week. I wash my hair two to three times a week, depending on the season. Summertime, I usually wash my hair three times a week because I do get a little bit more greasy because of sweat. In the wintertime, I can go up to two times a week washing my hair. I'm not saying I shower twice a week. I do shower more than that. What I normally do is I, like, clip my hair back in the shower so it really doesn't get wet. Now I'm gonna just kind of go really quick with treatments. Like I said, you are going to need some kind of deep treatment, but most people do masks anyways, so that's not really changing. Um, a treatment that I swear by, I cannot live without, I have to do this every six weeks. It makes my hair feel like it's never been dyed. It is so fantastic, and that is the Aflogy Two-Step Protein Treatment. It is $8.79 at Sally's, or you can get the big bottle for $20. This is good for about three treatments on my hair, and what it does is you put it in your hair, and it makes your hair smell like eggs, which is disgusting, and you blow dry your hair, and it makes your hair feel really, really stiff, <laughs> and then you rinse it out, and it gives this really kind of high protein, keratin kind of treatment to your hair that makes your hair feel amazing. I recommend this to anybody who has damaged hair. I have a full review of I'll link it down below. But just not really getting too crazy into it. Another thing that I tell people to do is probably like once or twice a month, or, one, or rather once every two weeks. Once every two weeks, once every week, depending on how your hair is. I like doing a coconut oil treatment, and that is... I have a video on one of the masks that I do. I mix an egg, egg in with it, but it's essentially just mashing up coconut oil and putting it in your hair for a few hours, taking a shower, washing it out. It hydrates your hair so much. It makes your hair feel so smooth. And I usually like doing that in between doing my um, Aflogy treatment because it just it makes your hair feel really, really nice. And it really doesn't, like, take away from, like, your daily hair routine because I normally do it when I'm just hanging home and it doesn't really matter. So this next part is kind of funny. <laughs> I tell everybody this when they have, you know, or they're going to have brightly colored hair. 
and that is it is going to stain. It is going to transfer. Some dyes more than others. Pravana, not so much. Manic Panic, like a bitch. Special Effects falls kind of somewhere in the middle, <clears throat> while Enrage is very bad for that. Now, the ways to prevent transferring, and I want to show you guys an example because this is my cell phone case. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's got a little sheen of, like, a pinkish purple, and that is because I have Special Effects Virgin Rose right here, like, my roots. So, when I'm talking on my phone, it transfers. Um, the way to prevent this, for me, I notice that it transfers a lot more when your hair is wet. So when I get out of the shower, and it, does, it is going to transfer to your towels, so just fair warning, I have black towels to prevent that. Um, when I get out of the shower, I will put my hair up and just kind of let it air dry for a while, and then I will blow dry it on cold. I like the cool setting. Um, I get my hair dry fairly quickly right when I get out of the shower because when it's wet, it transfers a lot. I never go to bed with wet hair because then no matter what dye I use, it will get on the pillowcase. Um, Pravana Vivids is not so bad with that, um, but usually once your hair is dry and after about the first week after dyeing your hair, the transfer kind of stops. But for like the first day or so after dyeing your hair, your hair might be tinted the color that you dyed your hair. Um, objects and your tub is going to be the color of your hair. Now, the way that I've stopped my bathtub from being pink, purple, blue, whatever, is right after I, ble or I do my hair, I spray my tub down with, I don't have it because it's empty, but it's Clorox bleach gel. It's in a spray bottle, and I have another spray bottle over something else. It's in a spray bottle, and the reason why I like the gel is because the gel kind of adheres <laughs> to the to the color in the tub and gets rid of it. So I just spray it in there, and then I run the shower like I normally would if I was taking a shower, about in like 30 minutes later, and it clears up most of the dye. Then in between showering, like throughout the month or so, if it makes my tub stain, the very little stain, I like using the Tylex Daily uh, Daily Shower Cleaner, and what this does is it's a non, like, you don't have to, like, clean it. It's a spray and walk away, so you spray the shower down, and it kind of just gets rid of itself, and I found that really helpful, especially with, like, the bottom of my, <laughs> bottom of my, bottom of my tub, which seems to get stained the most with the hair dye. I'll just spray this with this, and then, like, the next day I'll go back, and it's no longer pink or purple. And that's really helpful. Um, but it is going to stain a lot of things. So uh, my pillowcase is black and my towels are black. My phone case used to be black, but that's really it. It doesn't get on my clothes, though, so don't worry about that. Um, though my work shirt is yellow, and I think because I wear my work shirts all the time, just the back, like a very thin line of my work shirt, has like a purple line on it, but it's not crazy. Like I've worn like colors, I've worn white when I've had teal and purple hair, and it, or even red, and it hasn't like transferred to my clothes. Um, but that's just because I also make sure that my hair isn't wet when I put on my clothes. thing that I have to tell you about having bright, unnatural, crazy colored hair, like I said, it's not a lot of work. You just have to substitute or kind of tweak the things you already have, like mixing in dye in with your favorite conditioner so you don't have to swap out your conditioner. Instead of using regular shampoo that has sulfates in it, just get sulfate-free shampoo. Um, to keep your hair feeling better, uh, to keep your hair healthy, don't bleach your whole head. It's just small little things that you can do um, to keep your hair healthy. And so... I hope this video was somewhat informative for you guys. It is pretty long, like I knew it was going to be. If you guys wanted more tricks and tips on how to like maintain the color, I'll link the video down below. Like I said, please give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and I will see you guys in my next video.